Hey folks, Technivers here, and today we are looking at the Mingda D2 3D printer. Let's check it out. The Technivers channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to check us out on Patreon, pop over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-V-O-R-O-U-S. Here, we do our best to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in 3D printing and tech and keep you informed on the latest developments in these sectors. So, if you're interested in getting updates on 3D printing or technology such as programming, robotics, artificial intelligence, and things of that nature, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like on this video, and comment about what you'd like to see in the future because we make these videos for you. Hello my friends and welcome to another 3D printer review on the Technivers channel. Now this is the Mingda D2 3D printer and today we're going to take a look at this machine along with a few test prints and discuss some of its quirks. Now right off the bat you may notice a few things about this printer that are not standard. Like the hot end being a direct drive extruder. Instead of the traditional Bowden you find on most lower end machines, the filament is run through a filament sensor which is a great stock option for a budget printer and fed directly downward into the hot end via an extruder mounted beside the hot end itself. All this is encased rather neatly in a shroud which contains the fans as well. And this hot end is kind of heavy which I assumed would lead to either vibrational ringing or slower print time but so far I've had good luck with this machine printing around 65 millimeters a second. The next thing I noticed once I turned it on was the RGB light on the hot end itself. Now let me be clear on this, while it looks badass and makes the hot end look like it's totally hauling ass around the back yard, it is also pointless. It serves no purpose. But man does it look cool and I kind of wish my other printers had one. You can actually get into the settings with the touch screen and change the color on a whim or just let it cycle through them on its own. And that brings us to another upside of this printer. I've had several touch screen printers and usually they are slightly lacking in functionality when compared to the spinning click navigated LCD variety. However, what you have in this machine is a well thought out, robust UI with all the options you expect from a Marlin machine, simple easy to use controls, and everything from heating to movement and yeah, even changing the color of that little LED down there. I will say, I had some problems with the initial build as the English instructions were not the most clear. But I've spoken to Mingda and they are working on this and other than a few minor hiccups, however assembly was mostly a matter of common sense as after looking at the machine and its pieces included, it really only goes together one way. But once it's assembled, how is the quality? Well, take a look at these models. This printer included several test prints to try, so I printed three of them. The first print was this cute little pumpkin guy and it came out really well. You will notice it's two different filaments because sadly the example 50 grams included with the machine didn't make it all the way through. It was a great test for the filament sensor however and I simply switched to something I had laying around which actually came out looking kind of intentional. I assure you it was not. Next I printed this lovely art vase done in vase mode with a lot of intricate movement of the nozzle and this piece also came out well. Then there was this. What the hell is this thing? I was honestly so creeped out by this print when it first appeared before me that I had to hide it in a box because I thought it was possessed. Turns out after some inquiries that I don't watch enough anime these days and this guy is apparently a pretty popular character in one of those shows. I however do not care if it's famous, it's creepy and it won't stop looking at me. This machine is slightly larger than the Ender 3 at 230 by 230 and that is with a height of 260 so the direct drive mount makes it simple for printing and filaments such as flex or TPU and I believe it would be a great printer for a new hobbyist with its decent size and fair price tag. All in all my experience with this machine has been a good one and I really do like the useless RGB light even if it serves no purpose. Hopefully Mingda takes my advice and updates the instructions because it is all around a very decent machine and lastly Seriously, this thing is possessed. It scares me. All of the test models I printed came out hollow as well, so for being done with no infill, these models are actually even more impressive. If you've been looking at this printer, go ahead and grab one. It's sleek, it's cool, and it's kind of different. That light is freaking sweet. Well, that's it guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 
5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.